So you've now made the decision that research is the way and it's research that is going to add to data so that um, Africa can have data <laughs> that uh, can support the response to um, to health challenges. Um, mm. Is that then when you decide to, I mean, you graduate and come back or are there, <laughs> connect that for, for me? <laughs> Um, yes, of course. I mean, as I've said, um, I'm finishing my PhD. Yeah. Um, I think by now uh, we had already come to Uganda with my boyfriend at that time. Yeah. You, so we you've had, been visiting? No, no. We are together in Germany. So ah. we, yes, we had we, we had gone to Uganda now to meet my family. I had gone to meet his family in Burkina Faso. So now we are like really yeah. a couple. Yeah, yeah. So you can't just say I'm going here. Now yeah. you have to think about okay we are going yes. somewhere yeah. and so of course that was a big um issue to yeah. think about yeah yeah where do we go from here yeah but it's, it's 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 that thing like let's cross that bridge when we get there we finish the phd then mm. we look for opportunities mm. so i finished first mm -hmm. actually i finished before he did mm -hmm. and then by some stroke of luck mm. in the same department where we were mm. somebody came from aphrc to do their phd Okay. In the same department. Mm -hmm. And so he comes and is like, oh, you guys, you're about to finish. Really, I encourage you, you should go to APHRC. Mm. What is APHRC? He said, no, 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 this is a link, this is a website, you should mm. check it. Mm. So now we are thinking, it's like, okay, how will this work? I don't really speak French, so it will be really difficult for me to go and integrate in the system in Burkina Faso, where my husband comes from. Yeah. His English was not perfect, but it was better, and it had gotten better during the, the master's and the PhD. So for him, he could easily operate integrate. in a, in an in an english speaking anglophone. country more than i would be able mm. to integrate in anglophone mm. and then on the other hand we are like okay you know going to uganda is a bit strange going to Burkina Faso is a bit strange so mm. can we meet like somewhere halfway mm. <laughs> so mm. these are these are things you mm. you know you think about mm. <clears throat> and then now they we check the APHRC website mm -hmm. and for me the first thing that struck me on the website now, of course, it has changed many times over, mm. but there was something which says this is an Africa-based, African-led mm. research organization. Mm -hmm. That like jumped out at me, mm. like just reading the first mm. description of APHRC. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is my kind of place. Mm. African-based, Africa-led, Africa-based, African-led. Mm. I said, this is my kind of place. Mm. Then, of course, this gentleman mm. um, who introduced us to APHRC was there and he was telling us, you know, this place is great. It's, you know, just African scientists. Mm. They're trying to do great work. Mm. And it's a nice place to grow and they're really doing research. There's no teaching. There are no... So I was like, hmm, you know, interesting. So I got curious about APHRC. So, of course, check the website. Mm. And then um, at some point, somebody who was in Heidelberg mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm and joined the same institution. So he was telling us, you guys need to come, you guys need to come, you guys mm. need to come. Mm. But I think for me, it was like a lot of things that APHRC was checking, mm. um, you know, because as I've said, my African consciousness had been really heightened mm. Mm. Um, and my place as an African. And then of course, all that issue of data gaps. So mm. I was like, if I go there, if I'm able to pursue a research career, then I can, I can hopefully find a niche where I can fill those gaps because like those dashes were like in my head, yeah. you know, <laughs> all the time. Mm. Yeah. So then, so we applied, mm. um, once I finished my, my PhD finished defense, mm. my husband, I think had submitted, but not yet defended. Mm. So both of us applied. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember when we came, they asked us what will happen if we only give one, one person said no it's a package when mm. you you can't you can't split mm. you, if you take you take both of us mm. or you don't don't mm. take any of us mm. like okay let's see how this goes so mm. we come do the interview mm. and um before we came something also which was interesting this um the guy who introduced us said you know uh, APC is not like these other african institutions where people are not serious it's like okay like if you go you really have to be serious you have to prepare because they are going to like mm roast you mm. in the interview so you have to be like mm. of course it's a narrative mm. but it was it was good it was a good narrative mm -hmm. because as i've said it was also not something out of the ordinary mm -hmm. to just assume that i ah, you know mm. you know in africa we do things like this mm. 
you come late, you can mm. present anyhow. Yeah, exactly. Your slides don't have to be, mm. you know, good. You go mm. for conferences and you're like, oh my God, my African brothers, come mm. on. Like, mm. what is this? Mm. So like, no, 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 it's not mm. that kind of African institution. Mm. So you have to be mm. <laughs> like really on top of your game. Mm. And I was like, it was a good tip because mm. uh, the APHC interview, mm. Um, it's still legendary. Yeah. <laughs> they take you through the ring and they ring you and then they throw you out. Yeah. If you're still standing then, <laughs> yeah, then, you, you, <laughs> then, then you can, um, then you're ready, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to, to do APHRC. So we came uh, together, did the interview on different days. Okay. And left and then, mm. you know, got the offers. Both of you. Did. Both of us got mm. the offers. So mm. we went back mm. and uh, he graduated. Then after graduating, that's how we came. Mm. That's when we came. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. That you would begin together uh, a new journey. Yes, yes, mm. yes. And so, that would mean that you would be based in Kenya. Yes. Neutral. So, neutral, neutral, <laughs> um, third country. Yeah. And um, it worked, it worked out, mm. um, I think it worked out fine. Mm. Because as I said, I didn't have to, I was terrified of having to learn French and yeah. operating French, <laughs> you know. Burkina Faso has very strong research institutions, so possibly would have gotten jobs, but still. Yeah. To be a steep learning curve for me to French, function yeah. mm, mm, in French. Mm, and yet mm. for him, it was, uh, you know, much easier. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's how we ended up in Kenya. Yeah. 2006, first of May. Oh, beautiful. And we're still here. And you're still here. This is what, 15, almost? Almost 15 and a half 15 years. 15 and a half years <laughs> later. Oh, wow. And both yeah. of you are still at APHC? No. All right. <laughs> He left. <laughs> he left after a while. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. So your journey at APHRC. Mm -hmm. So you start off. What did you start off as? So you, I started off as a postdoc mm -hmm. or postdoctoral fellow. Fellow. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how it was called. Then. That's what you both got in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Both of us came as postdoctoral fellows. So mm -hmm. postdoc is, I don't know. It's a, it's a fellowship. So it's not really a position. Mm. And uh, what the postdoctoral fellowship is intended to do is like internship when you finish medicine. Mm. Uh, now that you've sat down in class, you've learned all these theories about research. Mm. So the postdoc allows you to hone those skills that you got in theory mm. and allows you to do something that now sort of strengthens mm. and validates the skills you learned in class. Mm. So it's an opportunity really to become a researcher. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why it's, it's very significant, especially from even from the APHRC's contribution to really the research um, landscape in Africa, is that there are not very many postdoctoral opportunities mm. in Africa. Mm. At that time, they were very, very, very limited mm. because there, there was even a narrative that the African postdoc is like a, an endangered species because it doesn't exist. Oh, wow. Because a lot of people, when they're doing their PhD, they're doing it within academic institutions. Mm -hmm. And when they finish the PhD, they are already in the system. So if yeah. you're a lecturer, you become a senior lecturer. So you, just so you don't have it, an opportunity to be extend your studentship mm. to become a mm. scientist or a researcher. Mm. So it's a very, it's something which is quite mm. unique to the African context, mm. but which is not good for researching in the mm. African context, mm. that there are no postdoctoral opportunities. So mm. when you come, you finish your PhD, you're already expected to be that mm. seasoned researcher. Mm. Mm. So people plunge in headlong mm. Mm. after their PhD mm. into the research world, mm. and then it becomms very difficult to because survive not to get as refined. Exactly, yeah. Y your years <coughs> of, of refinement and uh, yes, yet exactly. There. You don't have an opportunity to be to still be a student yeah. and learn yeah. before you become a researcher. It takes time. Yeah, it takes yeah. time. Yeah. The things you learn in in um, in in class, you learn all these models. They find yeah. they sound they sound very fantastic. You pass exams, and then you're given a computer with yeah. data. Yeah. And you find that you can't yeah. make headway. Yeah. So the postdocs allow the postdoc allows you to do that. Mm. And so that's one thing which uh, things have changed now. There mm. are more postdoctoral opportunities, mm. but they are not as um, many as they are, for mm. instance, in mm. Europe or other parts mm. of the world. Mm. So. So this postdoc was among the few that was there at the time. Yeah. And <clears throat> so you guys got this opportunity. Or was it? Is it generic or is it very specific? So the APHRC postdoc is is also unique and different mm -hmm. from like a postdoc if you're in London or UK or, mm -hmm. or you know, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, because APHRC is different in a way. So what we've done is to customize the postdoc to the African context. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because um, Africa needs research leaders mm. 
as much as it needs great researchers and its research leaders. Mm -hmm. So the postdoc at EPHRC is sort of sets you up mm. on this, a path for research leadership. Mm -hmm. And yet, in other parts of the world, the postdoc, as I've said, is to find yourself like what do you want, what do you want to be, to become a great researcher. Mm. But for us, it's research leadership. Research leadership. So there's research a slight leadership. distinction mm. about the where we put emphasis mm. as a postdoc mm. at the PHRC. Mm. We want mm. you to hone your skills as a researcher, mm. but then we want to start infusing mm. research leadership mm. into the expectations and mm. the support and mm. the training and mm. mentorship that people get. Mm. So you get a two-year fellowship. Mm. And so that's what all of us got. Mm. And um, so we came, mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. And um, APHRC was at a point, I think, of inflection, mm -hmm. really taking off mm -hmm. as a as a established research organization. Mm -hmm. And we in our time, in the year we came, I think they hired about seven, eight okay. or nine postdocs. Mm -hmm. Which was unprecedented mm. because there was a large grant that had just been, uh, awarded. Uh, you know, awarded. Mm -hmm. So when you come as a postdoc at APHRC, you are assigned a project, mm. a research project, mm -hmm. and so you work on the research project, mm. and that's where the research leadership comes in. Mm -hmm. Because managing a research project is not only about the science; mm. it's about being able to take the grant application and then breaking it down into activities. Mm. So there are there's things like work, doing a work plan. Work plan. And then there are things like planning activities, activity plans. Mm. Um, there, are th there are processes in research, like mm. um, obtaining ethical approvals, approvals before you collect data. Yeah. There are things in data management, like mm. data quality. How do you sure mm. that? How do you how do you make sure the data you collect is mm. very is mm. of the highest quality? Mm. Data integrity. So mm. there are many practical things mm. that a typical postdoc in Europe wouldn't do, mm. because a typical postdoc in Europe, you're you're putting a project as data being mm. collected by other people. Mm and the data set comes, mm. you analyze it, mm. you write papers mm. and you know, all that. Mm. So for us, there are a lot of more practical mm. research management mm. aspects that mm. come into our postdoc. Mm. Mm. And then of course, for the research side, so you get a two-year postdoc, we have very strict expectations. Mm. Number one, you get a project, you manage it mm -hmm. and manage it well. Mm -hmm. So we have good data, mm -hmm. we, we, the project timelines are met. Mm -hmm. And we do the project timelines in budgets. You mm -hmm. don't like overshoot. overshoot <laughs> and, yeah. and then um, now there are other deliverables. Mm -hmm. And then of course you publish mm -hmm. on the data. Mm -hmm. If there's a report, you write yeah. a technical report. Yeah. If there's um, writing scientific manuscripts, you write a scientific yeah, manuscript. Mm -hmm. So project management is yeah. a critical part of your postdoc. If you mess up the projects, yeah. project or projects, your postdoc, um, after the two years, we might let you go. Okay. Then on top of it, you're supposed to pub to submit at least six papers within that particular within two years project. No, or any this other. can even be using data from your PhD ah, um, or from any other okay. data set. All right. So within the two six years, you, sub you should submit six papers. Oh, so you plan yourself knowing that within <coughs> this two year period, you have around. to submit six papers, and some of those should be published by the two time the two years are over. Is there is there out of out of the six, how many should be published? Four. Four. So and this started the, at the time that you are there. No, they, it was already there when we came. Oh, oh yeah. so it's a so that, continuing that legacy. Would, exactly. That's so, for, <laughs> yeah, all right, that's pressure. <laughs> so six <laughs> papers uh, submitted, uh, mm -hmm. four to be published, mm -hmm. and then you do your project management of the research grant that yeah, has been that awarded is there. to you. One project minimum. It can be two. It can be three. Or de yeah. how, what, what determines that? The, 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 um, the, Funding. Period. Funding. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Because that's, that's pressure. Some projects are small, some are big. Yeah. So if a project is big enough and it can pay for all your time, yeah. 100 percent. Oh, that's correct. Then yeah. you'll be assigned one project. Yeah. But if it can only yeah. pay half of your time, then yeah. you get another then project. You probably need to pay for your time. Yeah. And at times, if you have multiple small little projects, yeah, then it's, more, it's much more difficult. Yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. more difficult. But then yeah. the experience <laughs> can be much more worthwhile because of the, the variety. Yeah. Yeah. That Wow.